Back to the Future Part 1 Welcome to WOW Recapped. Today we'll show you a 1985 American science fiction film titled Back to the Future Part 1. Marty McFly lives in a small town and dreams of becoming a rock star. He usually gets in trouble at school and spends most of his time with his girlfriend, Jennifer, and family. He also pals around with Dr. Emmett Brown. Marty doesn't want to end up like his family. His mother, Lorraine, is depressed, alcoholic, and overweight. His older siblings are professional and social failures, while his father, George, is always bullied by his supervisor, Biff Tannen. It's the 25th of October, 1985. Marty goes to Doc's house but finds that he isn't there. There's a report on television saying that someone has stolen plutonium. As Marty walks into Doc's house, his skateboard hits a box of plutonium under the bed, but Marty ignores it and hooks his guitar to a giant amplifier. Marty sets the amplifier to its highest point and plays his guitar which throws Marty into the shelves behind him. He then receives a call from Doc who asks Marty to meet him at the mall at 1.15 a.m. at the Twin Pines Mall and not to use the amplifier. When the clock in the basement chimes at the hour, Doc tells him they're 25 minutes behind. Marty realizes that he's late for his class. After being rejected from a music audition at school, Marty tells Jennifer at the infamous clock tower. They're interrupted by a lady who asks them to help her save the clock tower. She hands Marty a flyer that tells about the lightning striking the clock tower at 10.04 p.m. on November 12, 1955. Marty holds the flyer and puts it in his pocket. At home, Marty sees his father being bullied by Biff after he damages the family car, which his father desperately needs to take his mother out of town. At dinner, Marty's mom tells her kids how she fell in love with their father when he was hit by her father's car, and they shared their first kiss at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. On the 26th of October, Doc calls Marty to help him test out his biggest invention at the mall. He asks him to bring Doc's video camera to film the demonstration of his latest invention. Doc tells Marty about the car turning into a working time machine that works on plutonium that he stole from Libyan nationalists. Actually, he made Libyan terrorists a fake bomb. The name of the time machine is a DeLorean. The time machine has to hit 88 miles per hour, so Doc controls the time machine remotely while his dog Einstein is inside. His dog stays one minute in the future. Doc is so happy and tells Marty that it was the 5th of November 1955 when he got his idea of the flux capacitor. While testing the time machine, the Libyans show up. They shoot Doc and aim for Marty, but luckily their gun goes out of bullets and Marty escapes in the time machine. He escapes to the past, the 5th of November 1955, where everything is different. He can't go back to 1985 because he ran out of plutonium and the time machine isn't working. He stops at the local diner to find his address. He then realizes that he's sitting with his teenage father at the counter. Marty sees his father being bullied by Biff and gives him some courage to fight back. George then spies on Lorraine and falls on the road in front of a car. Marty is knocked unconscious while saving his father from a car accident. He wakes up and sees his teenage mother, Lorraine, being attracted to him. She took off his pants while he was sleeping and thought that his name was Calvin Klein, which was written on his underwear. Lorraine even touches him during a family dinner, which makes him uncomfortable. So he rushes to Doc's home. After telling him about the flux capacitor, he convinces Doc that he is from the future. They pick up the time machine and transport it to Doc's garage. Doc explains to Marty about the inaccessible plutonium and to generate 1.21 gigawatts for the flux capacitor, they need the power of a lightning bolt. Fortunately, Marty knows that a huge lightning bolt will strike on Saturday night at 10.04 p.m. Doc asks Marty to stay at home as he can change the future. At that time, Marty tells Doc that he saved his father from a car accident, which was the reason for his parents' meetup. Doc said that his parents had to meet each other, otherwise he was never born. So now he has to make his parents meet each other on the 12th of November at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. It's the 7th of November, 1955. At school, Marty asks his teenage father to ask Lorraine to the dance, but he's a loser and Biff has some feelings towards her, so he doesn't want to get in any trouble. The next day, Marty enters George's house early in the morning wearing his radioactive protective suit. 
He rudely wakes George up and pretends to be Darth Vader from the planet Vulcan, then asks George to take Lorraine to the dance. George is a huge science fiction fan, so he has to listen to Darth Vader. The next day, George announces that he will take Lorraine to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, but Biff shows up. Seeing him as trouble, Marty trips Biff, which leads to Biff and his friends chasing Marty, but ends up crashing into a truck full of manure. Unfortunately, this attracts Lorraine a lot. She thinks that Marty will be the right man for herself. She follows him to Doc's house and asks him to take her to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. He reluctantly agrees. It's the 9th of November. Marty explains his plan to George that he'll misbehave with Lorraine in the parking lot and then he'll save her. On the 12th of November 1955, Marty took his mom to the dance, but his plan backfires as Lorraine is very serious about their relationship. She's smoking a cigarette and drinking and suddenly kisses Marty, but realizes that kissing Marty feels like kissing her brother. Unfortunately, Biff shows up and throws Marty out of the car. They lock him in the trunk of the band's car that was going to perform tonight. Biff forces himself on Lorraine. Luckily, George arrives, and seeing Lorraine being assaulted by Biff, he knocks him unconscious. Lorraine is impressed by George and decides to go with him. The assembled students can't just believe that George knocked out Biff. Meanwhile, the band frees Marty from their car, but the lead guitarist injures his hand. Marty is still fading from the photograph, meaning his parents have to kiss each other. So Marty plays the guitar while George and Lorraine are dancing. But suddenly, some guy interrupts their dance and takes Lorraine away. Marty was about to disappear, but George goes for Lorraine, and they share their first kiss. It feels like his father has changed completely. Since his future is now secure, Marty then rushes to meet Doc at the courthouse. Marty hands Doc a letter, but Doc refuses to see it, as it would change the future and destroy it. Marty even tries to warn him about the Libyan terrorists, and he doesn't listen, as he doesn't want to mess up the future. Unfortunately, a tree falls down and unplugs the lightning rig. Doc climbs the tower to fix it. Marty recalibrates the time machine to 10 minutes before as he wants to save Doc. He hits the speed at 88 miles per hour at the perfect moment and he blasts back to the future. It's now the 26th of October, 1985. But the time machine breaks down and now he's late to save Doc from the Libyans. When he reaches the mall, he sees Doc being shot by the Libyans. He was mourning the death of Doc, but he was shocked to see Doc alive. Doc reveals that he taped his letter he'd sent and wore a bulletproof vest. When Marty reaches home, he's happy to see that everything has changed. His parents are now rich, healthy, and charming. His father's a famous science fiction writer. His siblings are no longer unemployed. He's happy to see Biff giving his auto detailing services. He's timid and works for George. When Marty reunites with his girlfriend, Doc shows up and reveals that they have to travel with him to the future as something is wrong with their kids. They pile up in the time machine and blast off into the future. The end. That's all for this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. We'll surely come back with another exciting movie.